Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today's Bible study. We thank you for those who made it possible so they can attend today and listen to your word. Thank you for your hand in our lives. Thank you for your interest in us. Thank you for what the Spirit of God has been doing through the scriptures to make us what we ought to be. We pray that today you will speak to us and meet our needs in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We have already seen how the Lord called Barnabas and Saul. They were having a prayer meeting in the church and the whole body met together while they were waiting upon the Lord praying and fasting. And it was in the midst of that worshipping and praying that the Holy Spirit spoke out separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them this took place in Acts chapter 13 and in verse 2 we read as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. How many times the Lord has spoken to us while in worship? While we gather with the other be, uh, disciples and believers. And then the Lord will be speaking to us or speaking about us. And the Lord will be giving us definite directions for our lives. He did it in those days and he's still doing it today. The revelations of truth. Revelations of directions of our lives that we never get when we're alone by ourselves. But as Barnabas and Saul came together with other children of God, and they were in fellowship, in communion, and they ministered unto the Lord, and they participated in the fasting, corporate fasting in the church, the Holy Ghost said, I have a work for you to do. And I want you to start it now. I want you to move a step further onto this work I have reserved for you. They responded. And then when they had fasted and prayed in verse 3, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. It's good for us to realize that we miss a lot when we miss the fellowship of the children of God. Deep revelations that God would like to reveal unto us about our lives, about the purpose of God for our lives, about the calling of God for us, and about an assignment he has for us. But we miss all these things because we miss the fellowship of the children of God. After they receive the, the revelation, they remain within the fellowship. Because they needed the prayer and the support of faith of the children of God. After they had fasted and prayed, hands were laid upon them. And then he sent them away to carry out the divine special assignment the Lord had for them. Again, we notice another thing here. The revelation came while the children of God were fasting together. From the teaching and revelation of the word of God and fasting in the Bible. There are things you will never know. There are things that will never be revealed unto you until you are able to wait upon the Lord in prayer and fasting. But you recognize the fact that even in praying, we pray more. Sometimes when we are in the midst of the children of God. Because the midst, in the midst of the children of God, there is an atmosphere of praise and worship, of prayer, communion with the Lord. The same thing with fasting. There are many times you want to fast on your own and you decide or determine, well, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps in two days' time, I'm going to wait upon the Lord, I'm going to fast. And yet when that day comes, maybe you start it off in the morning, after a few hours you feel so hungry, more than you were hungry before. And you said, perhaps I'll try it again tomorrow. And you are not able to carry it through because it's an individual, personal decision to wait on the Lord and to fast. 
But whenever the church is making it together, and the church is fasting together corporately, sometimes it becomes easier for you because it's a corporate decision, a church decision. And at this time, they were all in the church in a fellowship fasting together. And the revelation of this divine specific special assignment came for Barnabas and Saul. And they got this revelation of their lives. Well, the Lord speaks to us. As we have known, it's not only when we are being called to specific ministry, the call of God. The Lord speaks to us in various areas of our lives. Sometimes in marriage. Sometimes in the choice of career. Sometimes in a specific, definite decision we ought to take in an area of our lives. Then the Lord speaks. But he speaks very easily when we're in fellowship, worship with the saints of God. Or when we're waiting upon the Lord with the children of God. And it was at this time that Paul and Silas, sorry, Paul and Barnabas received the call of God upon their lives. And at such times we receive the call of God for our lives to fulfill a particular purpose. What we're studying today is how they fulfilled the call they received from the Lord. It is one thing to receive a call. It's another thing to fulfill that call. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. And say to Archippus, Take it to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Archippus had received the ministry, had got something from the Lord, but he needed to be reminded that he would take heed unto that ministry, unto that call that he received from the Lord in the Lord, that he will fulfill it. Again, the encouragement of other believers, very important sometimes. For us to fulfill the call of God upon our lives. And here Paul the apostle was writing to the whole church at Colossae. And he told the whole church that you must understand Archippus has, called, has got a ministry, a calling. And everybody in the church must remind Archippus, encourage Archippus, exhort Archippus. That the ministry you have received in the Lord, you must take heed, you must take care to fulfill and when this person saw Archippus in the church they will say Archippus remember you have a ministry fulfill it another person in the church will see Archippus and remind him again remember you have a ministry fulfill it and it was out of the encouragement and exhortation of so many people in the church that Archippus received all that he needed to be able to fulfill that ministry he had that advantage because he was in fellowship with other children of God in the church. And when you belong to a spirit-filled worshipping church, it's very important that you receive encouragement and exhortation from other children of God that to fulfill the calling of God upon your life. Now when we talk about the calling of God, I mean everything in your life, the profession, the career in which you are involved in, many times you need encouragement from the children of God fulfill that calling sometimes you have got married that's a calling of God upon your life and you need the encouragement and exhortation of the children of God fulfill that calling sometimes it's a student that has got the calling of God to study a particular subject in um, his uh, or her studies and you need the encouragement of the Lord fulfill that calling and Archippus received the encouragement now we see Paul and Barnabas, as they got into the field, opposition came against them. But they had some qualifications or qualities in their lives that made them succeed. And we're looking at the qualifications today, some of them. Well, you say, you are not an apostle, you are not a preacher. So why do we need um, to study all these things? Well, have you ever realized that the qualities in the life of an apostle, the qualities in the life of those preachers, they are the same very qualities you need in your life to succeed in anything you are doing in your life for the Lord's glory. As you look at the professions in the lives of men and women, 
you realize that even though the professions are different, the callings are different, the things they're doing are different, yet the qualifications are the same all over. Take a doctor and take a farmer. The qualifications a doctor needs to make him succeed in being a doctor, they are exactly the qualifications a farmer will need to make that farmer succeed. The doctor will need an interest in the job he has picked up as a doctor. A farmer will need an interest in the job he has picked up as a farmer. Without maintaining interest, the farmer will not succeed. Without maintaining interest, the doctor will not succeed. Take the doctor. He needs to understand and study about uh, his profession, about the sicknesses, the diseases, about the needs of men on the area of healing. He needs to have a study and to brush up himself and to be up to date in, the, in his profession, medical profession. Take the farmer. The farmer needs knowledge. The knowledge on what to sow, when to sow, where to sow. Needs to study so much as the as the, a doctor is studying about the sick people, the farmer needs to study about the soil. Needs knowledge. The same way the doctor needs knowledge. And you know sometimes the doctor needs courage when you bring a case on emergency. The, the doctor needs, a, you know, so much courage to be able to plow through. Needs a wisdom to be able to get through. You know the farmer needs courage when there is drought to keep on that job and still to have courage and confidence and say well i'm a farmer i'm going to get this work through and needs wisdom as well you know the doctor needs uh, persistence maybe sometimes he has uh, you know printed on people and he has failed and he, he just says i'm not i'm going to be a real qualified doctor i'm not going to let myself be discouraged even though i've made some you know failures you know the farmer needs uh, persistence maybe he needs um, you know acres of land and he's trying to get a uh, land from people you know it's not easy to get land from people or get land from government or get land from villagers but the farmer needs the same persistence to plow through and to say i am going to just get something done if he doesn't have persistence instead of sowing on an acre of land or hundreds of acres of land he's just going to be satisfied with a plot of land to sow in so you see whatever profession in which we are you know, we need to really get this, all these qualifications and uh, all these things done. Well, you say, I'm not a farmer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a professional man, I'm just a housewife. What important job you have on your hand. And you know that all that the doctor needs to succeed in his profession as doctor, you need all those qualifications to be able to succeed as a housewife. You need the knowledge about men, how men react. You need to study about your husband, read about your husband, read about men, to see how men think, how men react. As much as the doctor needs knowledge about the sick people, you need knowledge about men to be able to succeed in that marriage. You know, sometimes uh, as a housewife, you need persistence because there will be difficulties from your husband, from your neighbors, from your in-laws. But you need persistence. The same persistence a doctor needs to have to say, I'm going to make this my medical profession a success. The same persistence you need as a housewife to say, I'm going to make my marriage a success. Doesn't the doctor need wisdom? Don't you need wisdom in dealing with your husband? Making that marriage successful, real, um, real uh, wisdom and boldness. Well, whatever your calling may be, as a husband, head of the home, as a father, as a mother, as a housewife, as a tailor. Oh, you need all these same qualities and qualifications. As a tailor, you know sometimes, if you do not have the persistence, the union of uh, tailors all around you, they are going to say because you are not in the union, because you are not paying your dues, they are not going to allow you to succeed. But you need all these qualifications. That's why we're looking at these qualifications in the lives and the ministries of Barnabas and Saul. They were successful in the work. And already you've seen that they had a calling. You have a calling. Your profession might be your calling. You might be a zonal leader. You might be an area leader, house fellowship leader, or just a housewife, or just a husband, or just a, uh, somebody having a profession somewhere. That is your calling to succeed. You need all these qualifications. Now they had gone out in the world, but they received some opposition. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, reading from verse 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them 
out of their coasts, expelled them strong words against these apostles. Those two words have been words that have caused downfall of people. A student at school, that student did something, or perhaps some people told lies, they expelled him. Because of that, it becomes a mediocre in life. But he, he couldn't have studied the lives of the Apostle Paul, the life, uh, the life of Barnabas, to see that they too were expelled, and yet they became successful. You know, sometimes uh, somebody is in an alien environment, and in that environment, people around all the, all the tenants around there, they said, oh, they don't like this person living around here, and they expel that individual. Somebody gets into a village, and he's uh, preaching the gospel. They expel him out of that village, and he falls up, folds his hands and he says well i cannot be successful they have expelled me out of that place you know somebody has been going to a particular church before and in that church they expelled him maybe because they will not give them his money for tithe maybe because they will not marry the person they wanted him to marry and they expelled him and that man will fold his hand and say well i'll never go to any other church i'll just stay at home and become a heathen and become a pagan Oh, he doesn't have the qualification that makes a person successful in life. But these uh, Barnabas and Paul, they were expelled out of that coast. But we're told in verse 51, But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. It makes a difference when you see a disciple that is full of joy. And it doesn't matter what is happening around him, is full of joy and full of the Holy Ghost. In the place of work, things are tense, things are difficult, is full of joy and of the Holy Ghost. In the family circle, things are difficult, the resistance is high, the opposition is great, is full of joy and full of the Holy Ghost. He has, uh, be, his appointment has been terminated in a particular place and they have expelled him out of that job is full of joy and full of the Holy Ghost that man will never settle down to be a mediocre he will, he will uh, succeed in life and now you come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 and as you look at these two men of God what God did in their lives is able to do in your life in Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 verse 1 and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the, of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And you see that in verse 4, Barnabas and Paul were called apostles in the plural. When they were being sent out at the beginning of um, the missionary journey, they were just referred to as teachers and prophets. But they had responded to the call of God. They had faced difficulties squally and courageously. And they were moving on in the work of the Lord. And eventually now, they were no more just teachers. Oh yes, they were still teachers, but more. They were not just prophets. Yes, they were still prophets, but more. They were now apostles. You get promotion while you're on the path of duty. While you're moving on in the assignment God has prepared for you in your life, you move from one stage higher to another stage. But the people that sit back and say, Oh, there are so many oppositions against me, resistance against me. I never saw persecution like this since I received the call of God. The opposition, the resistance, and the persecution has been so much. You know, they never get promoted. They remain at the same level. But the people that say opposition or no opposition, I am moving on. They are the people that become promoted. They are the people that have a breakthrough in their life. You know, in, your, in whatever profession the Lord has called you, a doctor, an engineer, a farmer, a tailor, a trader, a businessman, a student, oppositions are going to come if there is a devil in the world opposition is going to come if there are sinners in the world opposition 
is going to come as long as there are people that don't like you succeeding and if you settle down and draw back and fold your hand and cross your leg and sit back and say oh yes because of those oppositions it, has, it appears I cannot make it now you know a person like that will never make it will never be promoted in your place of work the co-workers are not going to say well you've come to this place of work oh yes we've been expecting you uh, showing you now you're a messenger you can become a clerk you can become an, um, an area inspector you can become a director and show you that and clear the way for oh no they're not going to clear the way for you in your place of work they're going to bring hurdles and hindrances in the way but it's a man that makes up his mind as Paul and Barnabas made up their mind that I am going to the top I am not going to remain a messenger in this place all my life I'm going to the top the managers are going to speak against you sometimes co-workers are going to frown against you sometimes but to say i'm going to the top i'm not going to remain like this you know it's the housewife the mother of the children that says well my children i'm going to train them they are not going to remain illiterates they're, i just finished only secondary school in my life but my children they're going to get to secondary school they're going to get to technical school they're going to get to university the opposition will come sometimes no money to educate the children but you say well money or no money i'm going to educate these children they're the people that make it to the top in life but the people that say i have so many oppositions against me i can never make it you know they don't make it paul the apostle and Barnabas, they got promoted. They were called apostles while they were in the pass of duty. The same thing with those who are working for the Lord. House leader, area leader, zona leader, pastors of churches. Oppositions will come. You know, if you don't uh, do anything at all as a pastor, if you fold your hand, you'll never get land to build a church. If you fold your hand, you'll never get members to attend your church but when they're speaking against your church when they're really opposing you and you say oh we're moving on if you are just a teacher before you'll become a prophet if you are just a prophet before in no time you'll become an apostle because you are determined you are getting to the top you're not going to be a mediocre sitting at the back bench of the church and saying, well uh, the people will not allow us to preach you're moving on that's what paul and barnabas that's what they did and in your life never settle down at the lower part of the ladder keep on climbing keep on climbing part of the way you'll become tired but keep on climbing part of the way there are people that do not want you to succeed and they'll tell you to your face you are not going to make it but keep on climbing and by the grace of god you'll come to the top in jesus name Amen. and now in verse one it came to pass in iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. I told you before, everywhere Paul the Apostle went, he went first to the synagogue. Now you know, it's one thing to receive the call of God. It's another thing to use wisdom, wisdom in carrying out the call of God. I'm teaching you like this because you have a call of God for your life anybody that comes out of the hand of god has a call of god upon his life he may not know it he has a call of god on his life i didn't know the call of god upon my life until i i reached uh, you know i passed the age of 20. i never knew the call of god i just spent my life i never prayed to god to show me the call of god upon my life and you know in your life you may never be able to recognize the call of god upon your life you may just think i'm just a human being but if god has created you and he did if god has saved you and he's done that there is a purpose of god for your life well if you're a tailor you can so do it that it will bring so much glory to god and you can take that thing as a call of god upon your life if you're an engineer it, you may make a mark on history as an engineer and fulfill the call of god in that area if you're a doctor you can make a mark in medical profession that the medical profession will never never forget you never forget you you are not just there to you know go to the hospital in the morning and come back in the evening and be called an emergency and go in the night you are not just there to just be a doctor like everybody else you have a call of god and there's something you do to fulfill that in your life and in this world fulfill that call of god you know there are people that receive the call of god and they do not have the wisdom do you know that your marriage is a call of god you know people that get married and they're just married like every other person is married 
they don't realize now i have a call of god to fulfill in this marriage as a woman i have a call of god to fulfill in this marriage as a man and it takes wisdom you know every the way that paul the apostle went he used wisdom in fulfilling the call of god he went to the synagogue first why did he do that many many reasons number one i told you before because the jews already had the old testament the old covenant the old old testament scriptures he knew that it was easy for him to reach out to these people and after that he could reach the gentiles it was easy to move them from the old covenant to the new covenant they had known about the messiah they were expecting the messiah now the messiah had come and died on the cross and because they had known about the messiah before he would just introduce him to them jesus christ the son of god is the one you're expecting but not only that he knew that if he went to the gentiles first the jews will never receive him again because the jews were so arrogant religiously and if he went to the gentiles first oh they'll say well it's all right for the gentile dogs but he went to the jews first and if he went to the gentiles after that the gentiles will not mind at all because the new salvation is of the jews the oracles of god were given to the jews so it's all right going to the jews first the jew first and after that the gentiles he used wisdom haven't you seen a doctor very very good in the profession but because he had no wisdom he lost all patience haven't you seen an engineer is very very good at the mechanical things electrical things, electronic things but no wisdom he will not get any job haven't you seen a tailor before oh can so well knows the job very very well but because of the lack of wisdom he has no work to do haven't you seen a farmer getting land from the villagers and he is so wise a smile on his face and he goes to see the chief uh, of that uh, area and because of the wisdom because of the link with those people they tell him all the acres of land you want you can use i want you to see another farmer that has money that has every equipment you can think about but he has no wisdom and he loses the work whatever you're calling in this in this world you need wisdom i want you to see the housewife because of the lack of wisdom or the husband or the in-laws ruined the marriage paul the apostle had wisdom and because of the wisdom he went um, to the synagogue first and that wisdom is so important very very important in our lives whatever we're doing we need the wisdom of god to be able to carry through and uh, look at that verse one again and it came to pass in iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the jews and so spake and so speak that a great multitude both of the jews and also of the greeks believed so speak you know it's important how you talk very important to a preacher in fact the whole ministry of the preacher depends on how he can talk if he cannot talk and so speak convincingly and so speak inspiringly and so speak courageously he will never be able to succeed in the work of the lord so speak and i told you before that everything you do in life depends on how you can talk to other people i told you your marriage will never rise above the level of your tongue your profession your work will never rise above the level of your tongue anything that you do you know we're studying what paul did we're studying what barnabas did but not everybody will be an apostle not everybody will be a preacher not everybody will be a person that is working doing the work of the lord in a church but you know you have a work to do and the same very qualifications you find in the life of paul and barnabas the same very qualifications you need in your life i told you before even your marriage will never get beyond the level of your tongue you know that if your tongue is bad you'll always be at the lower part in society but if you can speak not just a, not an orator courageous words encouraging words wise words words that other people will hear they'll be convinced that god is alive everything will be going on well for you he so speak that a multitude great multitude both of the jews and also of the greeks believed and were told in verse 2 but the unbelieving jews stood up the gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren i want to tell you that opposition will come 
you know they just passed through a position where they were coming from and now in chapter 14 again in this new place our position came again you know i've found believers since i became a christian many many years ago and they will say as a cry i thought the lord was calling me but there is so much opposition that i know the lord is not calling me anymore and what brings doubts into the minds of people because they do not know if the lord is really calling you the devil is going to fight against it if the lord is really calling you sinners are going to fight against it you remember god called barnabas and saul unto the work where unto he has appointed them to do and he went into the work and every everywhere they went it appeared opposition resistance and persecutions were following them and the lord might have called you into a particular state in life into a particular profession in life into a particular thing to be done in life and you know there may be opposition and it is in the midst of that opposition that you will win the victory you don't win if there is no fight you only win if there is a fight to fight and paul and barnabas they recognized this even though the unbelieving jews stirred up the gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren yet yet they succeeded and this is what has called the downfall of many people as preachers as pastors oh they said the opposition is too much if god wants me to be a pastor then there'll be no opposition at all either within the church or outside the church oh haven't you read what paul said there are fightings without and fears within and it's in the midst of the fightings and the fears that paul the apostle he succeeded and at last he said i have fought the battle i have won now a crown of righteousness is laid up for me not for me only but for all those that love the lord whoever preached the gospel and there wasn't a fight think about moses that received the call of god and moses went to pharaoh and said let my people go and a fight started pharaoh said who is that god in the midst of that opposition moses succeeded how about joshua all the gates and all the doors of canaan they were locked very very strictly loved and yet in the midst of that resistance joshua succeeded you remember david after he was anointed king over israel was there opposition oh yes so much opposition that saul was looking for him chasing him all about to kill him and to destroy him in the midst of all those oppositions he succeeded have you read about jeremiah a prophet of the lord they locked him up they put him in a dungeon the word of the lord was in his mouth and there was opposition much more opposition than he ever got in his life before the calling of god upon his life and yet he succeeded shadrach meshach and abednego how they were opposed in their stand when they said they were not going to bow down and yet opposition came in the midst of that opposition they succeeded How about jesus christ our lord and savior the very son of god the only begotten of god you better believe it so much opposition in the midst of it all he succeeded the apostles of the lord jesus christ with in jerusalem until ye be indeed were power from on high and they had that power the holy ghost came upon them and yet immediately after that great 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 opposition you never saw opposition before great opposition but in the midst of it oh yes they succeeded and here we read about paul and barnabas called of god called of god and there was opposition in your life there will be opposition because even though god is on your side satan is against you unbelievers are against you but thank god your victory is sure but as if you don't get away from the battlefield if you don't you know fold your hand and sit back and get discouraged and say well i didn't know the fire would be as hot as this oh yes fire is always hot i didn't know the opposition would be as terrible as this opposition is always terrible coming from any direction if you will not sit back and lie down and say i cannot do anything if you rise up and say god has called me into this uh, life i'm living god has called me to this profession i have god has called me to the work of the church i'm involved in and god has called me to this family the one the lord wants me to raise up and even though the opposition the problem is there i'm going to succeed you are going to succeed in jesus name and so in the midst of that opposition look at verse 3 
long time therefore abode thee speaking boldly in the Lord therefore therefore what does that mean that means because of what we have read in verse 2 therefore Paul and Barnabas made up their minds as never before that they were going to do it and that's what Christianity is all about when you try to witness oh they're going to ridicule you when you talk about Jesus to your neighbors but because of that ridicule you said even because of that I'm going to witness more therefore you know in village work and village outreach you go to the village you want to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ there is going to be opposition and resistance but you make up your mind and say therefore just because of that opposition I'm going to do the work more than I wanted to do it before and in church work area leader zona leader house fellowship leader you know I've seen some house fellowship leaders before they became house fellowship leaders things were going on well for them the devil never bothered them no trial no opposition no persecution now the Lord has called them they are now house fellowship leaders and immediately they begin that work of the house fellowship leading you know persecution starts opposition starts oh they say maybe the Lord did not call me into this house fellowship work because I did not see persecution like this before I will just go back and not do the work of the Lord anymore oh the devil has cheated you but if you will say, therefore, long time I will continue the work of the house fellowship. That is how success comes. How success comes. And in all the men of God you found in the Bible, when opposition rises up, they face it squarely. They challenge the devil. And they challenge all the opposers. Long time, therefore, both they speaking boldly in the Lord. Because of those, the opposition that came against them, they now went to the work to do that work. And in anything in your life, brothers and sisters, settle it. Settle it. Be very sure of the call of God. Of the call of God. Now, you, you don't hear people talking like this, preaching like this. Because they think that the call of God is only related to full-time work. And so when they read the Bible about the call of God, oh yes, they are thinking about full-time work. Not everybody will be in full-time service. And then when they read about the call of God, they are thinking of just the uh, missionary work. And if you are not in missionary work, you don't think about the call of God at all. But every believer has the call of God upon his life. It may just be that marriage, I've told you. That's the call of God. Opposition will come. Make up your mind. This is my calling. The Lord showed me his will. And I'm going to make it a success. Whatever you are doing, whatever you are laying your hand upon, settle it with the Lord. If the Lord has called you into it, then be bold about it. Be courageous about it. And be steady about it. And abide in that calling where, wherein the Lord has called you, even though there is opposition, resistance, and persecution. Long time therefore, both they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. Gave testimony unto the word of his grace we have read so much in the bible that anything you lay your hand upon the lord will prosper you yet many times you have seen that there are many children of god that uh, uh, they do the work but then they have not seen the prosperity of the lord uh, you know what happens they allow the preachers to pray more than they pray the preacher has a calling of god the professional man has a calling of God. And the preacher knows that if he's going to do this work of God successfully, he must stand to it. He must resist opposition and stand firm. But the man in the profession does not know that. That like the preacher has to be firm, he too has to be firm in his profession. The preacher knows if I don't have the wisdom of God, I will not be able to get the church work going. But the man in the profession does not know that. That I need the wisdom of God as well. Now the preacher knows that how to be bold for the truth in this calling of God as a preacher. But the man in his profession, in his business, does not know how to be bold in the work that I'm doing where God has called me. And therefore because the preacher is going to get all these qualities and qualifications. You know everybody is thinking about all these qualifications when they are called into preaching service. Into the worship of the Lord to lead the worship and to lead the church worship. But you know in your own career you need all these things as well. To make a success in life. Because they are bored in that place. And they spoke boldly to carry out the work of the Lord. The Lord gave 
approval, testimony unto the word of his grace. And granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now the word, the word there, boldly, very, very important. Boldness is very important. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading verse 1 and verse 2. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance seen unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that, we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as ye know. At Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Now they were so convicted about what they were saying that they spoke it courageously and boldly. Boldness is very important in your calling in life. Whatever God has called you to do, boldness is very, very important. Very, very important. In any calling you find yourself as the Lord has called you. But there are four areas of boldness I want to talk to you about. One, there is natural boldness. That one, there is nothing you can do about it personally. If you are made that way, created that way, well, it's there. If you are not made that way, it's not there. You know there are people that have natural courage, natural boldness. And right from childhood they have been like that. They will dare anything. They will try anything. They will experiment anything. They may not have enough knowledge. They may not have much wisdom. But they are bold. Naturally bold. But I want to tell you. There is a stage that natural boldness will not carry you. You know it will carry you to a particular stage and no further. As a man, as a woman. But you know there is what is called Christian boldness. That just because you are a child of God, that boldness is in your life. Maybe before you were a Christian, before you became a Christian, you were weak, cowardly, fearful, timid. But now you are a child of God. The guilt has been rubbed off your life. The blood of Jesus has washed you whiter than snow. Guilt brings fear. Condemnation brings timidity. But then all the guilt and the condemnation has been taken away. And now you are a real child of God. Righteous in the Lord. What are we told in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1? Let's see it. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. When the Lord has made you righteous. When the Lord has cleansed all your sins away. Then you have Christian boldness. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. They were Christians. Therefore they were righteous. And because of that they had not just natural boldness now. They had Christian boldness. But you know sometimes, my brothers and sisters, there is a level that even Christian boldness will not carry you. You remember Peter? He had been born again. Because Jesus told the 70 disciples, and what he told them was true of the 12 disciples as well. Rejoice not only because the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. They were born again. They had Christian boldness. And you could see the traces of that. Even in Peter, when uh, Jesus Christ was alive, there were things he would do which he wouldn't do before he was born again. Things he would have done before he, uh, before he even received the Holy Ghost, just because he was a Christian. Doing it in line and in the, side by side with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian boldness. But then, there was a maid that came to him and said, you are one of them. That's how the time Jesus was, being cru was to be crucified. And he denied. And he said, no, I am not one of them. Natural boldness could not carry him far. Christian boldness could not carry him farther. But then the day of Pentecost came. And he received the Holy Ghost. And then he stood up on that day when people were amazed. And he said, what is all this? And he stood up and he declared that this is the Holy Ghost promised by God through the prophet Joel. And then he pointed to them right in their faces and said, You crucified the Lord of glory, the Lord of life, the Prince of life. 
And he said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And he told them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And they gladly received this word. And they that gladly received that word were counted. They were 3,000 3, men. And he continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Now you see, he had boldness, spirit giving boldness. Not just natural boldness, not just the Christian boldness, spirit giving boldness in his life. And you know, it's the same thing that the Lord will do for us when we come to the Lord. You need boldness in your life. To be able to carry through the calling of God upon your life, you need boldness in your life. You know, in this church, without the boldness of the Lord, I want to tell you, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have natural boldness. That's one thing I never had when I was an unbeliever. I'll not dare anything. I mean, something constructive. I will not uh, dare anything, uh, you know, constructive and, you know, wanting to be bold and aggressive and just do something positive and powerful. No, no. I was an introvert, reserved, quiet, except in a small group of just a small class somewhere in secondary school. But apart from that, outside, very, very quiet. But you know, after I became a Christian, I had Christian boldness. But even the Christian boldness could not carry me far. But thank God the day the Holy Ghost came and I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then I could imagine things and do things and, you know, get into things I would never have dared to do before. Thank God. Because, you know, when you are a pastor of a church, without the Spirit giving boldness, you will not be able to really reach out and do what the Lord wants you to do. But there is something else. There is faith-inspired boldness. Uh, do you remember Elijah? The land had been in famine for three and a half years. At the end of it, God told him, go and show yourself to Ahab. And then he came out of where he had been, and he showed himself, on, he saw Obadiah, and told Obadiah and said, now go and show your master that Elijah will see him face to face today. Obadiah said, what have I done? That was sending me on an errand like this. Because as soon as I tell Ahab, he is going to be searching for you. And if the Spirit of the Lord will catch you away, then I will lose my head. Because he has been searching for you in all kingdoms and in all nations. And anywhere he, he said that you are not there, he took an oath of them to tell him that, uh, uh, to assure him that they didn't see you. And if I tell him and uh, you are caught away, what will I do? He said, no, go and tell him. And eventually they met. And Ahab said, Oh, Elijah, you are the one that troubled Israel. And you know, Elijah that had been hiding away at the brook Cherries before, had been running for his life, that faith-inspired boldness came upon him and he looked at the king straight in the face and he said, You and your household have been troubling Israel. But now, go and call the prophets of Baal together and let them make a sacrifice. And he called all the children of Israel together and he said, Why halt you between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. And then he said, we'll put out a test. Let them take a bullock. Let them cut the bullock in pieces. Set it on set it on the altar. And let them pray to Baal. The God that answers by fire, that's the God the nation is going to serve. Oh yes, they said, that's what we're going to do. And he prayed, and he cried, and he prophesied, and there was no answer. At the evening sacrifice, at the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah came around and said, get aside. And he called the people, he said, come near. Then he looked up after he had repaired the altar and I told them to put water uh, in the trench that was dug. And he said, oh God, let these people know that you have called me and turn their hearts, their minds back unto you. And the fire fell. And as the fire came, everybody bowed and they, and they said, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. And then he took the 450 uh, prophets of Baal and he destroyed them. Faith inspired boldness. Faith inspired boldness. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Opposition came. Those people were not courageous people naturally. But you know, at the time that Nebuchadnezzar said, if I throw you in the fire, who will deliver you out of my hand? Well, they said... The Lord is able to deliver, but if he doesn't deliver, we're not going to serve your idol, O king. Faith inspired boldness. And this is what Paul had going for him. Well, if you have studied about Paul, he had natural boldness, but then he also had Christian boldness, spirit-giving boldness, and also faith inspired boldness. 
And when you have all this together, oh, it's a wonderful thing in your life what the Lord will do. Let's look at this uh, verses again. Remember, there was so much opposition. Next time when you have opposition, remember, the opposition cannot stop you from succeeding. If you, allow all, if you have all the qualities in your life that the Lord is expecting in your life. It came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And they so spake. They so spake. That a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stood up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore, in spite of the opposition, even because of the opposition, long time therefore, are both they, speaking boldly in the Lord, we gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. I've told you today, things that we may not count very, very important because we've been relating them only to the lives of apostles. But they're very, very important in our lives. Whatever the Lord has called us to do, opposition will come. Resistance will come. Persecution may come. But stand true to your calling. Stand true to your ministry. What the Lord has called you to do in life, let there be wisdom in your life. Wisdom in your life. Knowledge may not carry you far, but wisdom will carry you the rest of the way then let there be boldness. If you don't have natural boldness, well, there's no regret. I didn't have that either. But you can have Christian boldness. That people will look at that boldness in your life and they'll know that you are being with the Lord. Then you can have spirit giving boldness. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you can have faith-inspired boldness. The faith in you will rise so high, you'll be bold in your God. And nothing shall be impossible to those who believe in their God. Rise up and let us pray. I've told you these qualities are needed in your life. Even if you are a tailor, a worker in an office, just a housewife, just a husband, just a doctor, just an engineer, or if you are a preacher, all these things are needed in your life. Resistance against opposition, standing firm, when you are misunderstood, wisdom, persistence, boldness, they are needed in your life. And you make up your mind you are going to succeed in the calling of God upon your life. In the calling of God upon your life. Your marriage is part of your calling. Make up your mind you are going to succeed in it. Your profession, the work you are doing is part of your calling. Make up your mind you are going to succeed in it. And if, if you are called into full-time Christian service, oh, what a great, specific, special calling. Make up your mind you are going to succeed in it. If you are a zona leader, area leader, house fellowship leader, visitation leader, make up your mind you are going to succeed in it as a calling. But that will need wisdom, boldness, persistence in the face of opposition and resistance and persecution. Make up your mind. You'll succeed. Don't think these qualifications are only for apostles. You need them. Anything you are going to do successfully, you need them. Persistence, wisdom, boldness. Housewife, you need that? Your marriage may be the call of God, the will of God, the choice of God. But you need persistence, boldness, wisdom. Make up your mind to succeed. In whatever you lay your hand upon, like the apostles laid their hands upon what they were called to do, make up your mind to succeed. 